Hi, so today I'm going to be going over an 820-3330 board that I already fixed. As I said, with the employees not here, I haven't really had the time that I wanted to do the videos. So in order to get some of the board repairs done, I'm just doing some of them off camera while the uh, well, well, during the store's open hours. Obviously, I can't have a camcorder here and talk during business hours because it's... Hi, how can I help you? Hi, how can I help you? And it's just like every five seconds is an interruption. It would be absolutely impossible. So now that that is over, I want to talk a little bit about what it is I did to fix this board, what was wrong with it, and you know what, what, what happened, uh, what the th my thought process was the entire time. So this board had a DCN board that was completely destroyed. Let's see if I have the original one just so that you can get an idea of what that looked like under the microscope here. So let's just get the DC inboard under the microscope so you can see what this thing looks like. It looks really, really fucked really, really badly. That is, ugh, yeah. So when you see a DC inboard that looks like that, you should know that you're in for some board damage. So the first thing that was wrong on this board was that the DC inboard fuse was destroyed. So this never gets destroyed. I knew I was in some, for some fun after this because I've replaced maybe two of these in years. So that is the DC inboard fuse, poorly in focus, uh, surrounded by the flux that I forgot to clean away. Uh, let's just show you what that is on the schematic over here. So let's go over to schematic. This is for the 820-3330 motherboard. PPDCN. Okay, let's see what the name of that fuse is that I replaced. Uh, here you are, board. Yes, there you are. There you are. Okay, so F6905 is what I replaced. F6905. Now, I replaced this and it had continuity, but I still wasn't getting power through the entire machine. So what I did is I replaced the inrush limiter. Let me show you that. So the charger power after there the charger power goes over here see this page this is charger power coming in it's going to go through this transistor it's going to go through this current sensing resistor and then this buck converter over here is going to turn that 18 volts of charger voltage into 12.6 volts for the machine over here now the problem is, is that this you know I, I replace this and i start getting power but i'm only getting one volt out on the outside of this. So I get 16 volts going into it, but I have one volt on the other side of it, which means that something is wrong over here. So here's what I did to deduce whether or not I had additional problems or whether or not this uh, dual MOSFET thingy over here was bad. So if you Google this and you look it up, you'll see that these are two P-channel MOSFETs over here. I believe at the very least this one's a P-channel MOSFET over here. Now the way this is going to work, here's how this works. This is going to open and let power through from the source to the drain. This is going to open from here to here only if the power on the gate is lower than the power on the source. So the way this works, and pay attention here, is I need to get the power on the gate lower than the power of the source. Now you have a voltage divider over here, right? See R7085 and R7086? So if this volt, you know, and it attaches to this U7000 chip. So if U7000 shorts... Uh, this to ground over here. So let's just get a zoomed out view. So this is a voltage divider. Look at what my video is and what is a voltage divider if you don't know what that is. This here is a voltage divider. You have 16 volts over here. You have where you want the power to go over here. And then you have another resistor between where you want the power to go and a ground source. But instead of putting that to ground, you put it to the U7000, which can switch and say, okay, let this voltage divider go to ground. Let this resistor over here go through me and travel to ground. Or don't provide a path to ground. Now, this voltage divider is not going to work if the bottom of it over here is not given a path to ground. It will work if that is given a path to ground. So what I did over here is I wanted to check the voltages in this area. Now, I have 16 volts at the top. I had 6 volts over here, and I had 0 over here. This means that this voltage divider is working. So if I have 6 volts at the gate, and I have 16 volts at the source, that means that this being a P-channel MOSFET should open and let power through to the computer, right? It wasn't. So when it wasn't doing that again, I realized that this chip that I had replaced, it was actually bad. And I, I know this may surprise you. This may surprise a lot of you, but when you buy these boards on Alibaba for $15, you really cannot expect that every component that you get on them works, especially when I toss them back in the bin like that. You may wonder, Lewis, why do you have to buy this stuff on dead boards anyway? Why can't you just buy that direct piece? There's two reasons for that. The first reason 
that I'm going to give you is that customers don't want to wait. So the amount of time it's going to take for that thing to get here is actually going to cause them to decline repair. The second thing that I, again, this entire business is based on customer and patience. That's an important thing. The reason that I'm able to make money over other businesses is other businesses will say, we can do that in two days. I say it'll be an hour. They say it'll take a week. I say it'll take two days. They say it'll take an hour. I say it'll take five minutes. Oh, because you have to realize everybody walking into this type of business, they want the service to be completed before they've actually given you the machine. I've had people actually ask, like, so what is it? What's wrong with it? And they were irritated that I couldn't tell them that before they let the machine or the device leave their hands. There's a lot of impatience going on there. So if I have every single little piece I need on those boards, that's far more valuable to me than it being actually new. There are pieces where it is valuable to be that it is new. I do not want to install a used GPU that I ripped off another board. Because again, those are parts where you, it really, getting a used one is really bad. Like you want something that is new out of the box. I'm not going to install a screen that is used. Because again, that, it scratches over time, it gets dropped over time. But a little resistor or something like that, you know, like, that's going to last far along. Like that, that, that little transistor, if nobody does anything to it, that will outlive all of us. Seriously, like you, you don't have to worry about that little thing dying uh, at all just because it's, it's, it's because it's used. So anyway, so let's try to find this thing, right? So let's just say I need this little piece. So right over here, I go to one website. The first result that shows up on Google is a PDF. Let's see what that PDF is. So that's a PDF data sheet. So it's a, from International Rectifier. And look, I'm right. It says dual common drain P-channel MOSFETs. And again, uh, if you go back to the transistor video, if you want to know the difference between P and N channel from a very, very basic standpoint, meaning that for this specific type of usage, a P channel means that when the gate is lower than the source, you let power through. And when the gate is the source or higher than the source, power doesn't go through. Again, very, very oversimplified uh, explanation solely for laptop schematics and laptop troubleshooting. You know, again... People were getting really up in arms over my definition of a transistor. They were really up in arms over, like, the, you know, you didn't mention it's not a linear device and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I, motherfucker, like, I'm trying to simplify a laptop circuit for somebody who, who even after watching every one of these videos in my oversimplified definitions doesn't understand how this works. And you want me to get into the linearity and the device and everything when they don't even get that. Like, if I'm talking about how an audio amplifier works, then it's going to be very, very important for me to say, yes, a transistor is more than just a variable resistor. Yes, it is not linear. Yes, there are things you have to do to get linear function within specific regions or something close to linear function within specific frequencies and amplitudes and amplifications. And yeah, again, if I'm discussing a high-end video or audio amplifier, we need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about this for that. So if you want to troll and call me an idiot and blah, 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 I, whatever, I can live with that because what I'm trying to do here is when I'm trying to explain how a specific thing works, I want you to understand that specific thing. And again, if, if, if I make a video talking about how, you know, you want to fix Adcom and Parasound and Rotel amplifiers, I'm going to talk about a transistor a little differently than I do here. But for, the, just for, for laptop circuits, for MacBook circuits, when we're looking at a P-channel MOSFET, the voltage on the source is it's not going to go through to the drain unless the voltage in the gate is lower than the voltage of the source. So if the voltage in the gate is lower than the voltage of the source and a P-channel MOSFET, power goes through. The opposite is true for an N-channel. Anyway, back to what I was trying to do here. So I'm trying to look up where to buy this thing, right? Wait, let's go to Google Shopping. Noth there's nothing. Let's try eBay.com. Let's search for that piece. Nothing. Let's go to Mouser.com and search for this piece nothing. Let's go to digikey.com and search for this piece. Nothing. And here's the thing that you got to realize. Here's why I'm sick and tired of this as a business. So people will go like, why, uh, are, uh, why do you always say that this is a terrible profession? Why do you say that, you know, that, that computer repair is going away? Why do you say that, you know, you should be looking to do things other than motherboard repair? I, I enjoy doing this to some extent, but one thing that really, really tires me and that I get irritated at is that there is no support from the manufacturer for any of these products. If I want to install a security system, not only are, am I encouraged to go to the manufacturer's schooling and classes on how to use their equipment, but they will offer me ongoing support for if I want to do that. So let's say you want to be in the security industry. The people who get you licensed want to teach you how to do this stuff. The people who you deal with as your vendors, they will suggest ways that you can do things better and things that may save you money and things that you should have that you probably don't have. They work with you. 
in the laptop motherboard repair business. You are considered a prick if you're like me and you give away information on how to do this. Like there are so many people that think that what I'm doing needs to stop, that I am just ruining a business by teaching people how to do things. Manufacturers think that, again, like if, if they give me a, a source for that little transistor that the world is going to fucking end. You are constantly working against the grain to get anything done. I'm sick and tired of working against the grain. I want to work in an industry where if I need this dual P-channel MOSFET that I can simply go to a website, order it, give them money, again, take my money, and it shows up. I don't want to work in an industry where I have to like, you know, fucking import boards with holes in them and pray that the shit works. Anyway. So you, you, you can't buy this thing anywhere. So that's why I use donor boards. So I replaced that for the second time and it worked. And the way I was able to tell that it wasn't working the way it was supposed to, the way I was able to tell that the transistor that I took off was bad so that I wouldn't uh, you know, go ahead and start driving myself nuts in the rest of the board was, again, just by using my brain a little. Remember, again, a P-channel MOSFET is going open when the voltage in the source is higher than the voltage in the gate. This here in the data sheet says it's a P-channel MOSFET. So again, let's go back to my schematic. Let's go back to my board schematic here. So I measured at all these points. So I have 16 volts over here. This goes to the source. I have 16 volts here. I have 6 volts on my gate. And then on my output, I have 1. So this is not letting power through when it's supposed to, which means that it is bad. So I replace the dual P-channel MOSFET again. The reason, by the way, the reason I say transistor when a lot of you say, like, you should say MOSFET or whatever, it's not a transistor. A, MOSFET kind of is a type of transistor, and B, transistor is just an easier thing to say when it's late and I'm tired than a dual P-channel MOSFET in rush limiter. Like, excuse me for abbreviating. And as you can see, the fan spins, which means that as I like to joke on this channel, I'm done, and all is good. So that's that, and again, this is how you can figure out, is it the part that's bad, or is it something around the part that's bad? Because again, let's go back to this. If I have, if I have 16 volts on my gate and 16 volts on my source and it's not opening, am I gonna replace this? No, I'm not gonna replace this because it's not being told to open. But if I have 16 volts on my source, and six volts on my gate, and it's not opening, am I going to replace that, tr uh, that uh, dual P-channel in-rush limiter reverse current protection MOSFET? Yes, I am, because it's not doing the job that it is supposed to. And that's that. So I hope you learned something. Sorry that it wasn't in real time. I just haven't had the time to do a lot of these in real time with the staff on vacation. But when I can, if I have time, instead of reassembling the machine immediately, what I'm going to try to do with some of these videos, instead of reassembling it immediately, and when I do fix these boards over the course of the day with the customers calling me and people walking in and blah, 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 I'm going to put these boards to the side. I'm going to put the computer to the side. And once I close and I'm done, I'm going to explain what I did so that I can still kind of give you the insight that I do into these repairs, even if you're not necessarily watching the soldering job in real time.